Prices for just about everything are rising fast. Take a look at this chart. It shows the cost of food in the U.S. steadily rising over the past five years. Food prices are going up. Everything from snacks to produce to my beloved meats and those <laughs> everyday items, even pet food becoming more expensive. Around the world, consumers are grappling with the soaring cost of food. Prices now at their highest level in a decade, according to... The current energy crisis has snapped through our fragile just-in-time supply chain and is currently leading the way to a massive spike in food prices. Food inflation and shortages will most likely be the main news story later in 2022 and 2023. But currently, it looks like the beginning of the housing crisis, where some people were shouting their heads off that the market was about to collapse, but nobody was paying attention and didn't notice until it was too late. Natural gas prices have skyrocketed during the past year as a result of tight energy markets due to a global push toward renewables and an aggressive dismantling of traditional energy. In the US, the price of natural gas increased over 50% in 2021, and Europe and Asia over 500%. And this trend is continuing into 2022, with both oil and natural gas up roughly 20% year to date. And you can watch my last video for an explanation of the current energy crisis and why we are here. The rising cost of natural gas prices has also had an impact on fertilizer prices. This is because natural gas is needed to produce nitrogen fertilizers and make up 60 to 80% of the production cost. This led to the price of fertilizer skyrocketing 5 to 600% just in time for the winter planting season. As noted in my last video, the US has a large domestic supply of natural gas, which explains the price discrepancy between US and European gas prices. However, this buffer only affects manufacturing. It does not insulate farmers from a rising cost in fertilizer because fertilizer is a global market and the US does not produce a lot of fertilizer. It comes as a surprise to no one that China has taken over the manufacturing of basically everything during the last couple of decades. And this comes with a wide array of problems. China's response to the energy crisis was to block exports in several critical industries. One of these was for phosphates. Phosphate is another key ingredient in fertilizer and China represents roughly 30% of the world trade in phosphates. And this ban is set to stay in place until at least June 2022. China wants to make sure that Chinese farmers have the fertilizer supply they need for domestic food production so there isn't a food shortage that tends to cause civil unrest. So. China is focused on domestic stability while also having the power to decide what industries are turned on or off for export. And this has naturally led to even more pressure on fertilizer prices. And China is not the only country resorting to halting exports of important commodities in the name of domestic stability. Russia, which supplies over 40% of Europe's natural gas, has also reduced exports of several important commodities. One of them being, <laughs> yes you guessed it, fertilizer. Resource nationalism and export restrictions make a lot of sense for the exporting countries since domestic issues will always take precedence over international issues. But it's catastrophic for countries that rely on these exports. Since the price of fertilizer has skyrocketed, this means that farmers either need to buy fertilizer at higher prices or buy less fertilizers and get lower crop yields. Both equal higher food prices in the end. And since farmers don't have unlimited resources, it's most likely that they have bought less fertilizer. And this will affect both the quality and the quantity of the food produced. And this has not only affected the winter planting season of 2021, but will most likely affect the coming planting seasons in 2022 as well, since this fertilizer conundrum is unlikely to be resolved until then. But we've already started to see the effects of rising cost in fertilizer. I bet a lot of you have noticed an increasing amount of headlines regarding food inflation and shortages. But the price of food for the consumer is about to go up even more. We're most likely at the beginning of a multi-year process. The full effects will only start to show once we start yielding crops that were planted during seasons affected by skyrocketing natural gas and fertilizer prices. Supply and demand underpin the markets for crops and food and have complex and unpredictable variables such as weather risk, geopolitical risks, supply chain risks, and energy prices. But in the end, less food available equals higher food prices. And fertilizer is crucial to growing crops like soybeans, corn, and wheat at scale to feed a global population. Not only do we eat these crops ourselves, but we also use them to feed our livestock. 
so it's not far-fetched to see how a rise in natural gas prices has a ripple effect across the entire global food supply chain. What's interesting is that we have not yet seen the prices of these crops increase to the same extent as fertilizer prices. In 2021, soybean prices rose 8%, corn 33%, and wheat 31%. However, the last time that fertilizer prices spiked to the same extent as in 2021 was in 2008. And that led to the 2007-2008 world food crisis. And while crops are moving toward 2008 prices in absolute terms, they have not risen by the same amount in relative terms. And with that I mean to the same extent as natural gas and fertilizer prices have moved, despite these commodities being essential for the production of these crops. While natural gas is a key commodity in fertilizers, it actually has a lower correlation to food prices than oil. US natural gas prices have a relatively weak positive correlation with soybeans, corn and wheat. However, oil has a very strong positive correlation. This is because oil is used to fuel equipment and transportation and is also used for pesticides and chemicals for growing and production. With oil prices rising rapidly due to a supply shortage and an increased inflationary outlook for oil in the coming years, with many analysts calling for $150 per barrel of oil or even higher, there is a very strong likelihood that we will see sustained high food prices. However, it seems like the futures markets are not pricing in any significant price increases for the food crops. And to me this does not make sense given all the above listed macro factors of higher energy prices, resource nationalism, supply chain disruption and affected planting seasons. It looks like the perfect setup for structurally higher food prices, although this will take some time to develop. With surging energy prices driving inflation in major economies to multi-decade highs and catching central bankers off guard, the next source of pressure will come from food prices. Food has a much larger weighting in the CPI, the consumer price index, which measures inflation, than energy does, and particularly so in emerging market economies. It's in food prices where the seeds of the next crisis may already be sown, because high energy prices are likely to have strong second round effects on food. The investment bank Nomura expects a 15% rise in global food prices by the end of 2022, which will push inflation even higher and lead central banks toward earlier and swifter policy tightening. A lot is pointing to a very challenging situation moving forward regarding agricultural commodities and food prices, and I wonder how leaders, who up until now have doubled down on their energy policies, will react when the wider population start noticing that food is becoming prohibitively expensive.